You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to rollermartinunfiltered.com, you can make this possible. Well, Trump got overwhelming support from white evangelicals in 2016, winning a higher percentage than George W. Bush, John McCain, or Mitt Romney. According to, a, according to a 2019 Pew Research poll, their support continues. Almost 70% of white evangelicals approve of Trump performance in office. Some of the things they approve of, he acts like a bully, but he's fighting for them. He sees America like they do, a menacing place where white Christians feel mocked and threatened for their beliefs. And he's against abortion and gay rights and has, has uh, the economy humming to boot. Now, that's all based on the story in the Washington Post. And it was really interesting reading this story um, uh, Kelly, because I'm reading this story and and you're seeing these comments like, yeah, you know, basically we can excuse the racist stuff. Yeah, you know, okay, he cheated left and right, the porn stars and everything. But you should, I mean, the quote from Ralph Reed was hilarious. This this well, everyone has moral failings. The extent the white conservative evangelicals are going to make excuses for Donald Trump, I kept telling everybody, white conservative evangelicals don't give a damn about racism. They don't care about the economy. They don't care about sexism. They don't care this man is a liar. They don't care this man cheats. All they care about is abortion, and same-sex marriage, and gay folks. That's it. <laughs> And I would take it a step further. I would say that they don't even care about Christ because if Christ were to come down today and look for his most, you know, devout followers, I sincerely doubt that they would be going to a white evangelical church um, because what they're doing is unchristian. What we are seeing right now is is just plain racism. It is plain bigotry. It is plain prejudice, but it is not Christian. I am a Christian. I know that you are a minister. We we know our Bible. We no, know no, our no. teachings. My wife's a minister. I'm Your Buddhist. wife's a minister. I thought you said you were a minister. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He has a ministry. Oh, he has a ministry. Oh, he, has a ministry. he has a ministry. Is that what it is? Yeah, this okay. is his ministry here. And, and, and even that, that is fair. Sustained. Sustained. <laughs> but you understand my point. We know our Bible. People who are Christian know our Bible. And this is one of those things where you can't point to a verse where they are actually following the uh, red letter Bible to a fault such that Trump actually aligns with it. It, it, it. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't match up because what they're practicing is not true Christianity. It's bigotry. Have you ever I love this quote here. I love this quote here in this Washington Post article where this guy. So what happened was the Washington Post interviewed 50 white. First of all, they said 50 evangelical Christians. They should have said white uh, in three battleground states, Florida, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin to explain why they like Trump. This guy was like, well, quote, you just got to accept the bad with the good. Uh, and then when you also. Uh, go uh, into this story. Uh, they talked about, oh, how Obama made them feel so bad because their thoughts on uh, same-sex marriage and abortion. And then uh, he, he, here's Ralph Reed, okay? Okay, the chair of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Uh, he said, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to defend you. Then he says, uh, he gets it. He knows they are hungry for that. But Cleo, what's hilarious is these people are so close. They, they, they one person even said, yeah, I like Trump because he talks about God a lot. That man ain't got nothing godly about him. He's playing these folks. He is. Roland, pardon me for being redundant, but I've said a million times, at least two million times, do not try to look at this through a logical lens. And, and Kelly mentioned that if Jesus came, he would not approve of this, but that depends on whose Jesus you're talking about. That's true. I mean, if you ever seen pictures of the KKK with Jesus saves behind them, this is a heart attack. And Manifest Destiny was, a, was part of a religious movement in terms of God sent us and gave us the destiny to kill everybody who, who was originally on this land and take it over. And people were murdered, children were killed. So let's be real clear. You, earlier you said that they were against gay rights and they're against abortion. Well, look, 
Listen, if we look at this from a white supremacist lens, they look at abortion as an interruption of the reduction of white people because they're having a hard time producing. And they look at homosexuality as people who don't produce. So they want to get rid of them because they get in the way of the production of white people. They're white supremacists. That's why I call them evil angels instead of evangelicals because it sounds like that's what, that is spelled almost the same way. So let's be clear about the fact that th these people do see Trump as representing God because as far as they're concerned, God believes in white supremacy and God supports white white people reigning with everybody. And that's really their agenda. They don't care how bad he is. If he's against immigration, if he's against anything that's going to interrupt the production of white people, they're about what, he, what he's about. No matter, you're being logical when you mentioned the pornography and the sex scandals. That's irrelevant. As long as he's about white power, he is their representative of God on planet Earth. Melek, I love this quote. He's forthright and honest. <laughs> Fourth white or fourth right? At his rallies, <laughs> at his rallies, talk, at his rallies, he talks about God. Then, um, then uh, I love this one here. Um, all of our laws are based on the Ten Commandments. I think that's why the country is losing the values that we once had. Uh, actually, all of our laws are not based upon that, the Ten Commandments. Because you can't have "Thou shalt not kill" in your nation that supports the death penalty. Um, then, um, uh, and then, of course, uh, I found this. Let me read this one here. I, I just thought it was just uh, just too funny. Um, some evangelicals label themselves values voters. What they mean by values, abortion and gay rights, not traits like integrity and kindness. I love this. There's no way I can know those attributes of a person's character. This, according to this woman. Julian Ketchum of Hope Community Church in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. I love this one, Malik. Here we go. Where's it? <laughs> Although he then said he picked Trump over Clinton in part because he found her dishonest. <laughs> now, how in the hell can you say you can't attest to the character attributes of Trump, but I'm going to define the character of Hillary Clinton? Sit your ass down. <laughs> stop lying. Now roll it. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, and I think it actually is laid out in the article itself. Um, once you dig, once you dug in the article, of what we're talking about are issues, um, things that the evangelicals support. I think it, we would do ourselves a disservice not to acknowledge that there aren't plenty of black evangelicals who are against same-sex marriage, who are um, pro, you know, who are. Um, pro, um, pro life. Um, I can't think of what the other. They, but uh, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's be clear. There are black evangelicals mm -hmm. who do not support same sex marriage. Yes. Who do, who, who are pro life, but who also don't have blinders on. Who don't ignore racism. Who don't ignore the economy. Who don't ignore how uh, uh, undocumented workers are being treated. The problem for these white conservative evangelicals, they don't give a damn about none of that. They don't give a damn about the border. They don't give a damn about his comments in Charlottesville. They don't care about none of that. All they care about, those two issues. Yeah. And so black evangelicals actually are have a conscience in saying, I can't just support somebody who lies, 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 and hear white conservative evangelicals say, oh, my God, he's so honest. He's yeah. Well, Roland, he speaks the truth. He mentions God. He mentions God at rallies. Oh my goodness! Well, Roland, how can you say this man is godly when he don't act godly? Well, Roland, as someone who actually grew up in those churches where I've heard the fire and brimstone preach, you know, um, sermons against homosexuality, the idea that this is something that's limited to now, sure, black evangelicals they may be concerned about other issues, but those are not policy related issues. I think if we're talking about things this like. That's a lie. But no, I, no. I, no, 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 I, I, no. When you roll back civil rights protections, Mellon, in the Department of Education, in Commerce, in HUD, that is a policy issue. No, well, when well, you want, I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> when you say we are going to go back to using private federal prisons in the Department of Justice, that's policy. When you tell your U.S. attorneys to go after the highest number of years to put somebody in jail, that is policy. When you say we are going to prosecute the Maryland law laws, that 
is policy. But when Roland, to say the Obama that... administration, well, I'm not done yet. Well, just with finish, Obama, Roland. Well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> with the Obama administration said we support the plaintiffs suing voter ID in Texas because it was racially discriminatory, and the Trump folks came in and said we are going to reverse it with the Republicans. That is policy. Well, Roland, so you I'm... can't say black evangelicals are not supporting policy. They are. Well, Roland, those things weren't actually mentioned in the article, so I don't know. Maybe they should have asked them those questions about how they felt, felt about all of those issues, but it just wasn't mentioned in the article. What are you... No, because it wasn't mentioned in the article because the article was about white conservative right. evangelicals. 50 people. Know, like... 50 people in a country of how many million, hundreds of million? 50 people. So we're talking about 50 people, but my point here is that if we're talking about conservative issues... Ballot, you actually don't believe that the 50 people they talk to in three states is not is not an example of where white conservative evangelicals are in America? Yeah, it's an the example of where some of them are. Absolutely. It's an example of where some of them are, but we're still talking about 50 people. But I know just from personal experience, when we're talking about things like same-sex marriage and abortion and all of those issues, that's pretty e evangelical. So yes, maybe they should be concerned about some of the other issues that we're concerned about. But, think, but, but to but, couch this under this notion that somehow that this is how white people feel, I can, show, I can, go, I can send you to some churches where black people are actually talking about things like same-sex marriage yeah, and abortion. But Melik, you're mixing, some, you're mixing things up. I, of Thank course, I, I came from the black community and know about black churches as well, and I know there's black people who are not evangelicals who have issues with abortion Absolutely. and same-sex marriage. Absolutely. That's a whole other issue. Yeah. The other issues that, uh, uh, that Roland's bringing uh, uh, in is... All uh, right, who, who on the panel is same gender loving? I know Cleo is, so Cleo. To keep Miller keep talking about just those two issues, I am. But that's what the article get... talked about, though. No, 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 the article talked about how though the article is confirming what I said. Right. They but, only care. About, yeah. They yeah. Confirmation about, bias. About, yeah. I agree. That's what the article about, did for you. They don't care about his lies. They don't care about his porn stars. They don't care about his payoffs. They don't care about all they care about, man. And long, you, Trump. You can do whatever you want. Because they're you not talking about the pastor of their church. They're talking no. about a politician. They're talking about God, no, the, though, too. Yeah, but they're still we, talking about a politician, not someone who's actually pastoring a church. So I think when, though, that is a distinction between a politician and a moral leader, someone that you would actually have leading your church. But I'm pretty sure that none leader, of them, right? none of those e white evangelicals would like Trump to be the pastor of their church. Well, well, I'm pretty sure well, of that. Well, I'm but, pretty sure of that, but we're going to... Please stop. I am talking. <laughs> Clearly, I'm going to you. I can't hear you. The article is confirming what I am saying. Right, your confirmation box. White, Jimmy Mellick, I'm talking. Cleo, I'm going to you. The article is confirming what I am saying. White conservative e e evangelicals don't care about nothing else. Cleo, they don't care how this man is destroying the Department of Agriculture. They don't care about the scientists who are quitting because they deny climate change. They don't mm. care about the food program. They don't care about the rolling back of environmental laws. They don't care about none of that stuff. As long as he gives us right-wing federal judges, as long as he opposes gay stuff, as long as he down with abortion, he can do whatever he wants. He got our vote, Cleo. Because that's their priority. We're looking at priorities here. Yeah. And everything else you mentioned, including climate control, which is, which is connected to capitalism, frankly, if, if people take a look at climate control and what it's actually doing to the country and to the world, people have to change up how they make billions and billions of dollars, and they don't want that interrupted. That's more important than the world, than being rich. And that's one of the problems we have in, the, in this country. But the bottom line is that their priorities is power. Their priorities is people who are not going to uh, support the institutionalized interruption of the production of white people, which is how they see abortion and how they see homosexuality. So this is an issue simply of having focus. And because, they, because people had focus, including the 53% of the white women that voted for him despite pussy grabbing, et cetera, they were like, he can grab all those pussies he wants as long as he does what he says when he said you will right. never, you'll never be ignored again. And we were real clear when he said making America great again, which was a contrast to Obama and his black wife. 
So we're no, the, that's so, so let's be let's be real that's, clear that's here that yeah. that people were, were wanted to make sure that somebody was going to be in office that was going to whiteify with no questions in terms of their their agenda and even the immigration laws. I mean, we, we, there was an article that came out I think today about him Trump prioritizing rich white immigrants coming over here. So there's real clear Malik, clear Malik, here about priorities. Malik, then Kelly. Yeah, well, I, I disagree that this is some notion somehow, you know, to further white supremacy. I don't, I obviously, I don't agree. With, I, I obviously, <laughs> obviously, I don't agree with that at all. I think it's a ridiculous um, assertion to even make. But again, focusing on what they're talking about, they could have very well asked those white evangelicals their views on criminal justice reform or some of these other issues, but they didn't. So we're talking about, you know, the, the, as you said, stacking, the, stacking the courts. How do you know they didn't? How do you know? How do I know what? I just didn't ask him. How do I know? Say that again. How do you know they didn't ask How about those other know? issues? It, well, it, it wasn't mentioned in the article. We're, we're literally talking about an article. So you they said, didn't. why they asked him? You don't know that. Well, it, well, if they did, they didn't bother to put that in the article that we're talking about based on the 50 people in, country, in battleground states around the country. Well, don't assume. Don't we didn't ask. But but it's not in the article. So if we're gonna if if they were going if they wanted their point of view articulated in the article, they would have actually put that in the article. So they didn't think the Washington Post did not think that those issues were important, which I which I assume is why they didn't ask that and put it in the actual article. A good journalist. Do what? You a journalist, Melik? Oh. A am I a journalist? No, I'm not a journalist. I just read the article. Ever written a news story? No, I haven't. I just know what was in the article. And those things weren't in the articles for a reason. They didn't want it in the article. Melick, I've written thousands of news stories, and guess what? There are times when you don't put everything in an article. Right, but we're talking about things that weren't put in the article. They weren't put in the article. Assume you tell me your comment. Did he go to me? Yeah, Kelly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I agree with uh, Dr. Cleo here in terms of, you know, white evangelical Christians, I would argue, is, you know, the cornerstone of white supremacy in this country as it stands today. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they try to use Christ as their rationale and their buffer for their bigotry, but in reality, it's just not Christ-like, period. Not you know, letting people be as autonomous as they possibly can be, you know, within reason, when we have free will, according to what God says, you know, that's not Christian for you to try and control somebody's autonomy. It's not Christian for you to not give out grace and mercy to your fellow neighbors. But is it no. not Christian to try to survive? I'm sorry. That's what, white supremacy is a white survival tactic. Correct. So, so is is it a quote sin to not do anything you can, scorch earth, whatever, to survive as a people? I would argue that it is unchristian to do that at the uh, at the behest of somebody else. But the, but the but the existence of somebody else, based on a white supremacist framework, is a threat to their very survival. Right. So their that, very existence is is that is, 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 if this country becomes more people of color, quote mm -hmm. unquote, is a term that's always used, and they get outnumbered, which means they're genetically and in, in terms of population in, in, in a threatened. I mean, this is what this is what Trump meant when he said you'll never be ignored again. He was trying to talk to correct. people who were thinking like that. Well, so well, they want to they yep. to survive. Yeah. Is that a sin? Is well, it a I, sin? I, no, but what they're practicing is not the Christianity that I was raised on. It's not the Christianity that Christ actually bestowed upon. And there are a people. lot of black people I who want to finish. That, who aren't Let me Christian, finish. Who aren't Christians. Let me under finish. That definition. But Kelly, I'm, please finish. What I'm saying is the Christianity that Dr. Cleo is talking about is Eurocentric, xenophobic Christianity. Mm -hmm. It is not the holistic, universal Christianity that Christ himself actually. Uh, you know, created his doctrine upon. What you're talking about is something that is actually inherently American. It is inherently xenophobic. It is inherently indigenous to this country. So what's happening right now is something that is, quite frankly, 
just American. That and plenty that's... of black people actually fit that bill. So well, if we're, so we're going to call, so we're gonna call white black evangelicals unchristian, if we're going to call white evangelicals unchristian, then that goes for the black people who are against those same issues as well. You can't pick and choose what's going to be unchristian because it fits your politics. Listen, what I'm not going to do is play the deflection game. That's not a deflection. That's a fact. Article, the, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. The article speaks to the reality. That is, what is appealing to white conservative evangelicals about Trump? And what it I'm trying to explain to people is, yes. folks need to stop wasting. First of all, Paula, Paula White ain't going to say a damn thing about the racist comments of Trump. Nothing. Ralph Reed, not going to say Jack. Franklin Graham, not gonna say Jack. Jeffers, not gonna say Jack. All these white sort of evangelicals who've been kissing Trump's butt, not gonna say a damn thing. You know why? Because they don't care about those issues. They don't That's care. Right. Okay, because if you, if you actually were prophetic, you would speak to the issue. But you're not. You're partisan. All you care about, you say, Trump, give us federal judges will be against abortion and against anything as right. LGBTQ. And they have a right to be concerned about fine. those issues. We're perfectly fine with that. And I'm saying I'm going to call him out because, right. yeah, because he's not their pastor. Christian. You're some fake Christians. I'm going well, to a break. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you've heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. We know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all of the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the United States and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill changed all of that, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. Folks, they need land to grow all of the plants. This is not the rocket science. It's real simple. It's an incredible investment opportunity, and that's where our friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. My friends at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for the Roland Martin Unfiltered fan base. Originally, the minimum investment level was 500 bucks. Right now, you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200. That's right. Anywhere from 200 bucks up to $10,000. Let me recap. This is a $340 billion industry that is still growing. And you can participate with this little as $200. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered Fish.